So Minecraft can teach kids with autism social skills and the world's first openly autistic lawyer has started her practice in Florida. All that coming up right now. Hey guys, welcome back to the Autism News Show with me, Dan. I have Asperger's, ADHD, OCD, and dyslexia. I make weekly videos on autism and Asperger's, so if you're new around here and want to learn more, remember to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on a video. Okay guys, so this is basically a news show that I do every single week. So I am gonna be going through a bunch of cool news stories and stuff that's uh, hitting the news about autism right here, right now, and we're starting now. Okay, so there was a play that just opened up in London called All In A Row by a playwright called Alex Oates. It's been getting huge backlash from the autistic and neurodiverse community because of the controversy surrounding the play. So basically the show is all about a family living with like a young boy with autism, but here are some of the controversial aspects of this specific play. The young boy who has autism in the show is played by a puppet and it's like a grey puppet that's like kind of lifeless and weird and the reviews are terrible. It's actually not even played by a human, which is kind of degrading because it makes people with autism look like they're just, you know, just, I don't know, dispensable puppets. Like just, it's just weird. I, I mean, just at the get go looking at it, it looks a bit weird. And I know plays are supposed to be like hard hitting and a, and a bit odd and different. And that's the idea of plays. But you know, when you're dealing with people's medical conditions, this is a different matter. So reportedly this has a very offensive script. The dialogue's terrible because I haven't actually seen this play. I'm just going off reviews and stuff that I read. Um, and one, one point they say, one of the characters says, autistic kids are like reincarnations of puppies. They poo all over the floor and they're bouncing up and down everywhere on the spot. I mean, like this can't be good. Um, the National Autistic Society have responded and said that they do not approve of the play, so they're not really happy with it. Um, it's getting huge backlash. Even the actors themselves are quite shocked at how much backlash they're getting. And I guess it's not their fault because you know everybody has to earn a living at the end of the day. And, um, but yeah, it, it's really it's really odd. There's also other controversy surrounding Alex Oates, the actual guy who wrote it, um, where he used like a, a tweet from a kid who had died, uh, an autistic kid who had died. He retweeted the story. And, and, and pitched his play in there, which is a bit kind of like distasteful. Okay, so moving on to Canada. So uh, the Ontario Canada Autism Program overhaul is causing huge upset. Um, there's a huge lack of response and there's uh, concerns over the autism uh, upset because basically the families are saying that the company's not really responding. They're not really saying how they're going to fix this. There's a huge issue right now, as we've covered in the last couple of shows, where the autism program in, in Ontario has been overhauled to kind of cut waiting lists. But what they've done is they've kind of restricted people from accessing certain funding to get certain therapy. So now what you have is parents are like looking for other ways uh, to fund therapy, you know, like, so where they would have had therapy through this, this program. Okay, I know it's not great. The waiting lists were really long and it was getting kind of bad and backlogged, but now it's even worse where they're not even gonna have enough funding to cover the therapy that they need. So they have to make tough decisions. And so the parents are really freaking out. It's a crazy mess, but we're keeping a close eye on it here on the Autism News Show. So if you have any input to add to that, please leave it in a comment comment below because I'd love to have a discussion and share that knowledge with anybody else watching this show who would benefit from that information. Okay, and some lighter news over in the United States. Uh, a rescue dog uh, trained for the military um, is now helping a young boy with autism. So uh, there's a five-year-old boy in the USA um, who is in need of like just help basically with just daily life and skills and anxiety and all that kind of stuff. So basically his parents are wanting to try everything and there was this guy who basically takes um, dogs, trains them up and gives them to like military PTSD kind of uh, traumatic experience people who've been in the military and stuff like that but he's turned his arm to trying to help kids with autism so basically this dog is called River um, and uh, it's made a super strong bond with this young boy in America so the dog is then going to transition and then become that boy's carer which is going to be super super awesome the parents have noticed a huge difference in the boy when he's with the dog and the animal therapy is amazing now the coolest thing about this the guy who trains these dogs to send them out to different people does it completely for free he raises all the on his own. I think he says he raises about $6,000 per dog to train these dogs up to being like service dogs. And then he gives them to people who need them uh, completely free. But the interesting thing about it is that he gets all the dogs from like rescue shelters or homeless shelters or dogs who've been abandoned and things like that. So he's saving two lives. He's giving the dogs somewhere to go. And he's also helping people who really need it with mental health conditions and autism now, which is super awesome. So that guy gets a thumbs up. Okay, so you guys have probably heard all about this in the news and I've waited till this week to talk about 
about it. So this week, my news feed has been blowing up about Haley Moss, who is a Floridian woman, about 20 years old, I believe, who has uh, started practicing law legally by the Bar of Florida, who is openly autistic. Now this is cool, um, you know, she might just be making history here, because in January, uh, Moss raised her hand and took an oath and become Florida's first lawyer living openly with autism, which is super amazing. Um, she said, and this is quoting her, the things that are hardest for me are actually outside of the office, such as driving and daily tasks. Uh, she also said, starting a career is a huge transition for anybody, but it's uh, monumental for an autistic person as it means we have to establish new routines, which it does, and everybody can definitely, uh, you know, uh, sympathize with that. So the cool thing about this is that her skills come in handy specifically for law, like she has, um, photographic memory and a super good eye for detail, which is gonna be super awesome for somebody who's practicing law. Um, I find this very amazing that people are now coming out and saying openly that they have an autism spectrum condition, practicing professionally, because before I believe there was much of a taboo over it, where a lot of people wouldn't really say that they had an autism spectrum condition because of backlash that it may cause. Okay, so teaching social skills to children with autism using Minecraft. Now, Microsoft have just released, literally yesterday, just released a step-by-step -step guidebook for teaching um, kids with autism social social skills in Minecraft. So basically, this comprehensive, this is a comprehensive and accessible guide, contains everything that needs to be known in order to set up and run a social group for children with autism spectrum disorders. This is amazing, like, so a lot of children who are on the spectrum love Minecraft. It's very, very popular with people on the spectrum. And in fact, I love Minecraft, and this is a bit of inf inside information. When I did my degree in chemistry, I did my dissertation about using Minecraft as a teaching tool for teaching kids about chemistry. Now, being super awesome, Minecraft were um, hot on it and were able to literally step up and make this step-by-step -step guide, which is available only in the US at the moment. I will leave a link in the description below so you can actually go to Amazon and get this book if you're really interested. I think it's only out in the USA, but I'm not entirely sure, so please do some research if you want to try and find out if you're living anywhere else outside of the USA. Now, Minecraft is a great tool, and I feel like gaming in general helps kids with autism uh, open up and have better social skills, but this just proves it to me that it's, uh, yeah, it's super, super awesome. If you like this video, guys, check out the the other ones each side of me right now. There are also the other episodes in this series of Autism News. And if you want to see more, remember to hit the subscribe button. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video, guys. Peace.